this time of year, kids are packing up all their summer gear and heading back to school. And one concern that parents often have, and sometimes will send them, you know, running in fear, is the fear of head lice. And head lice are something that are, are a little bit tricky because they are insects. They have six legs, but they do not have wings. They don't jump. They only can crawl. So head lice are blood feeders. They have to have a blood meal in order to complete their life cycle. And that sounds really creepy to a lot of people. So to get that blood meal, they have to get it from the scalp. And the scalp just provides a really nice environment. So there's lots of um, moisture and warm temperature for them to be able to complete their life cycle. And to be even more creepy, head lice complete their entire life cycle living on the human. So that you, won't, you won't find them in the environment. You won't find them in the wild anywhere. You won't find them on your pet or on a horse or at a farm. They're only found on humans. So they have to be transmitted from human to human. The most common way that children get head lice are from head to head contact. So many times the children will play and just in their play, their heads come in close contact with each other. The lice have little claws. Their feet are equipped with claws that can hold onto a hair shaft. So they're able to let go and then grab again. So that's the way they distribute. A lot of times it goes through a family. So you'll have siblings that will each get infested and then you'll have cousins that come over to spend the night. And so then it moves through the family cycle and those cousins and siblings are in different classrooms at school. And so then it moves through a classroom or moves through a daycare center. So usually if there's one child that has head lice, it quickly moves from one child to another strictly because of the head to head contact. And humans will react to the saliva in the head louse as it's feeding. So it causes itchiness. And so parents or teachers will see children that are scratching their head more often than they should be. And many times you can actually see um, a redness or an irritation behind the ears or at the nape of the neck. So that's one indication. Another is finding the eggs glued to the hair shaft. And those are called nits. So a female uh, will live about 30 days and every day for about the last 20 days of her life, she can lay three to five eggs in a day. And those eggs are glued onto the hair shaft very close to the scalp. So parents have to worry not only about the live adult lice, but also about those eggs that are being laid on the hairs. So when parents want to treat, one of the best treatment strategies is to comb out those nits and to comb out those lice. And the nits, like I said, they're cemented onto the hair shaft, very difficult to remove. So sometimes it's a, a good idea to have a, a pair of safety scissors and actually cut out a few of those hairs. If you catch it early enough, there'll only be a few nits. So you can just cut out those hairs and dispose of them. And when the hair is not on the human body, it's not likely that that louse is going to be able to survive after hatching. For more information about head lice, visit Solutions for Your Life.